Hello, this is John Wars coming to you from MaxCookie.com. This will be part two of the White Storm Cave tutorial. I'll be going over how to make custom brushes for ZBrush straight out of 3D Studio Max and how I went about detailing the rocks for the cave. Okay, so in this tutorial I'm going to be making some small rock debris that we're going to be using later in ZBrush. I'll be using a Z-Depth uh, render to get the, the brush I need in ZBrush. Uh, so I'm going to start by just creating some cubes that are going to be the basis for our rocks. Um, their size can be arbitrary. I'm just going to go ahead and make these 20 by 20 by 40 meters. Um, later we'll scale these down to fit the scene as we need them. And I'm also going to give them um, one segment. I got the width. Uh, that way we've got two cubes basically here. Uh, from here I'm just going to make this into our editable poly. And just like in the last tutorial I'm just going to rotate, scale, copy this this one guy around to make a, a bunch of debris. Uh, again I'm using control V to duplicate these guys. Just get a whole whole bunch of them trying to get them as random as possible. Once you get a few of these guys kind of moved around, you can drag select multiple of them and copy and then start kind of working them in groups. Switch to my local rotation here so I can rotate these without them moving position. Just keep doing this. And it's going to just be just a sort of pile of rubble. We're going to be using this on the, the ground plane in order to add some small rocks and debris, kind of liven up the, the scene a little bit, give it some detail so we don't have just a flat, flat ground plane. I'm also, as I'm spreading these out, sort of giving it the overall silhouette of a circle. Um, I just prefer this in my brushes. Um, it makes them a little easier to place next to each other. So you'll see kind of the, they kind of stay within a ring. Um, now that I've got all, all my little debris, I'm gonna kind of merge these together. Let's go in settings and do an attach. I go into my schematic view just so I can easily grab all these, make sure they're all attached. There we go. Um, here I just hit the little box next to the attach, get an attached list, and I can shift select all of these boxes and just do an attach. That looks like I missed one. There we go. And now we've got one object of all our, our rocks here. Okay, from here, I'm going to go ahead and just add a, a noise filter. Let's go down. Noise. And on the strength, let's see, 100 meters. That looks pretty good. Um, so this is just adding some randomness to all the geometry, kind of breaking them up from their cube shapes and giving them some more erratic kind of rock shapes. You can play around with the strength here. 
um, as well as the the seed and the scale until you get something that you're that you're liking or you can even do multiple of these to get different brushes with different shapes uh, now that I've got the noise I'm gonna do a, a quick relax this is something that will kind of get rid of some of the the more extreme pieces of the geometry and kind of bring them back um, I'm using just the default settings. Um, you can change the relax value to get more or less relax. Um, you can see they're starting to become more closer to spheres, which I don't want, so I'm going to pull this back. Um, from here, I want to add a, a small bevel or ch chamfer to these just to get rid of the hard edges on all the, the rocks. So here I'm going to go to another edit poly. Or sorry, uh, that's going to be a uh, edit mesh. We're going to select. Actually, I want to go to edges drag select all the edges and then here under chamfer uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a 5 meter chamfer see what that looks like looks like we're getting some nastiness on some of these so I'm going to pull that back just do a, a control Z to undo let's try 2 meters that's that's looking a lot more like what I want. So here you can see we're getting some nice kind of almost like cobblestones that have been chipped up on their corners and sides, which is what I'm looking for. Okay. Um, and I'm also going to do a quick UV unwrap just because I, I may be using these later in the scene and I want to throw a texture on them. Um, so we're just going to do an unwrap UV. Uh, go to our edit. From here, select our faces. Drag select. Make sure we get all of our faces and go to mapping. Normal mapping. Hit OK. And we'll just have some basic UVs that will hold up in our scene. Uh, nothing fancy. Okay, just save this out. And now I want to create a camera so that's an orthographic camera so that I can render out uh, z-depth of our rocks here. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a standard free camera in the top view so it's pointing down. Just move it just above just a little above the highest rock in our scene. Um, from here, switch my perspective to my camera. Now in the camera, um, in the camera settings here, there's an orthographic projection. I want to check that, and now we have an orthographic camera. And now our field of view is going to change basically the height of our camera. So now we can see we're getting all the rocks in here. Change this to 130. Should give us enough. And now I'm going to change some render settings. Uh, I'm going to do a 2K render, so 2048 by 2048. Uh, generally, brushes you want to be square. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Lock down my aspect ratios. Um, you also want them to be relatively high res just because we're dealing with a grayscale gradient. You want as much information as you can get. Um, sometimes I'll even go up to a 40, 40, 96 if I really need a, a lot, if I'm getting some blurriness. Um, but a 2048 should be fine. Let's see. going to show save frames here so I can see exactly the render. 
I'm going to bring this back. It's like 120 degrees and we still get everything. So we want to fill this texture as much as possible so we're making use of of the, the space. Uh, and from here, let's set our camera, our render camera. One. And for renderers, I'm just going to use the default scanline render since we're just using uh we just need this grayscale z depth uh that'll work fine for us let's go ahead and give it a location so i'm just going to call this uh rock rock debris and i'm also going to make it a bmp file so we can get this straight into ZBrush. And now we want to go to our render elements here in the, the render and do add. Come down to the very bottom Z depth. And the Z depth is what's going to give us our brush information. And now we've got this min and max, which is basically the white to black fall off where it's going to happen in meters. Um, since our camera's pretty much right at the top, we can start we can start right at zero meters and we just need to find out where we want that to end. So we'll go from zero meters on the min. And now if I if I look down here at the Z coordinate, that's going to show me in meters where this camera's at. So I'm at 50 meters in height. If I if I scroll down here, you can see it's changing, and I'll go to about looks like negative 20 or so meters. Um, so we're having a change of 70 meters from the top to the bottom of these rocks, a difference of 70 meters. So when I go here to my z depth, I'm going to put in the max at 70. And this is something you can play around with. Ideally, you want to be using as much of the black to white space as possible, but you never want to go full white or full black within your geo. So you want it to only go from a very light gray to a very dark gray. Um, so when playing with these settings, you know, change them, find what works. Uh, right now, as long as you're you know, you give it enough tolerance, you should be good. So I'm going to do this 0 to 70. Save this again. Just do a render. See what we get. So here you can see the Z depth. And you can see we've the only black we have is where there's negative space. But within the rocks, there's no black. And ideally, no pure whites. It's just a very light gray. So I, I think I can go a little smaller, so I'm actually going to maybe change that 70 to like a 60 or a 50. Let's see what a 50 meters will look like. Render this out again. And there you can see we're losing some into black, which we don't want. So let's bring this back. Let's try 60. Okay, and 60 is looking a lot better, so I'm going to stick with that. And now this will be able to import straight into ZBrush and apply it to our ground wherever we need these little rocks and pebbles. And it'll give us a, a nice height map, um, you know, with, with very little work. Um, and you can do this with any sort of uh, rocks or geometry that you want. Just bring them in, render out the Z, the Z depth, and it'll give you a really nice brush to work with in ZBrush. Okay, so from here, I'm going to be going into ZBrush and start detailing out this cave geometry uh, that we can use. Well, one last thing before we go into ZBrush, I want to come back to our original layout file and export each of our, our pieces here uh, as OBJs to bring into ZBrush. So from here, um, you can just select each of our rock pieces individually, go to our drop down under export and just do an export selected. This way we're exporting each piece individually as, 
as opposed to doing them all as one group. So we can keep them separate in ZBrush. And on the drop down here, select OBJ. We'll give it a name here. Wave Spire Left One. Do a save. And under the presets here, you can select ZBrush as the preset. Go ahead and do export. Done. And you can do this for each of each of the pieces of geometry here is to an export selected. All this left to around the back wall. Export selected. Back wall. Uh, continue doing that for all the pieces, including our character here in our little table stand and uh, the ground as well. And once you have all those pieces exported as OBJs, we'll be importing them into ZBrush as separate models so we can work with them individually.